Steve Hansen here with the janitorial store in my house cleaning biz where we help cleaning business owners start, grow, and scale their cleaning businesses. So today I just wanted to talk to you about uh, the common mistakes that residential uh, cleaning companies make when they expand into commercial cleaning. There's some, uh, some very common mistakes that they do always make. Um, one of the first ones is that you know they're trying to run two businesses at once. So I'm, what I mean by that is that they're, here they've got a, a residential cleaning company that they've, uh, you know, that's probably doing pretty well, and they they decided to expand into the commercial market, uh, either by uh, a referral that they got by one of their one of their current customers, and or they just decided to expand into the into commercial, uh, knowing that it's a it's a good market to be in. So in any case, it doesn't matter how they decide to, that they want to go into the commercial side of business. Uh, the real problem is that now they're going to try to run two different types of businesses at once. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, you have to remember that the residential cleaning business is, runs one way, and then the, the commercial cleaning business runs another way. Uh, very, very important. They're totally two different animals, and you have to remember that. Your pricing is different. Your marketing is different. Uh, there's so many different things about it. Production rates are just huge, hugely different. And, um, you know, that can be an issue. So what happens is because they're trying to run two different, two different businesses, that they, they get sidetracked or they have no focus. And that's really the issue. So, and that's why many, many companies fail is because they don't focus. So let alone that here they're trying to build a residential cleaning company, but now they're trying to expand into a commercial into the commercial industry, um, so they're actually pulling their focus away from the residential side of the business, and and maybe just maybe they're focusing on res, on the commercial side, um, but in most cases, what I find out that there really is no focus on either side because they're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, one of the problems with that too is that. A lot of residential cleaning companies, they'll they'll sell on price. You know, it's a common it's it's common practice in the residential industry to sell on price and offer and offer discounts. So when they're out there selling to their prospects, you know, they're off, always selling on price and always giving discounts. You know, and giving discounts is uh, something I don't think is a good idea because you can never make up that lost profit, and you shouldn't you shouldn't have to offer discounts just to close a deal. So if you're selling on value, and uh, and you can uh, show actually show that value and provide that value, you'll be fine. But too many residential cleaning companies make that mistake of selling on price and giving discounts. So that's that's another common mistake they make. So the other thing that they, that happens is that they uh, they have a lack of systems and controls. So. They, that is also a common problem in their, own, in their own residential cleaning company, let alone, but now they're here, they're going into the commercial side of the industry and they have no systems and controls at all in that side of the business. Uh, again, that's very, very important. Now we all know as business people that in business we have to have systems and controls. No, no doubt about that, you know, because we, any business runs off of the five, killer, five pillars of business. And if we don't have systems and controls developed in, within those five pillars, we're going to struggle. So very, very important, you know, to make sure that you have a process to develop your systems and controls and uh, be able to have these recorded and put in a, oh, a file somewhere on your computer. Uh, you know, and actually that's, that's something that uh, I teach in one of my co uh, coaching programs, uh, business development. So uh, maybe that's another video. But anyway, it's very important to have your systems, systems and controls in place uh, when you're starting the commercial side of your business. The other thing that happens is that they often bid too high. Uh, I get this all the time. Uh, you know, we have uh, members of the janitor of uh, my house cleaning biz that will go into the, the commercial side of the business, and uh, they'll often email me or call me on our cleaning related questions line and and say, Steve, you know, uh, for some reason I just can't close any deals, you know, what, what's going on? You know, and, and people have been telling me my price has been high. Well, that's exactly what it is, is the price is too high. What happens is that the common mistake that they make is that they still got that residential hat on. Uh, in the residential industry, you know, your pricing is uh, $25 to $45 per hour. 
uh, in the commercial industry, you're not going to get those kind of prices. Um, you know, you may be floating around $28 to $35 per hour, depending on where you're at, New York and, you know, in, uh, Miami, some of these other areas. But uh, generally, that's the reason why they, they lose some of these uh, bids that they, that they go out and put uh, uh, these accounts that they put proposals on. And it, it is because they're, they're thinking of uh, pricing their residential services. The other, the other problem with that is what happens is that they... Uh, uh, I'll jump ahead a little bit, but they, their production rate is the one thing that, that really affects that. So they're using residential production rates for a commercial account, which will never, never work. Um, you have to remember that uh, your residential production rates uh, for a bi-weekly general clean could be anywhere from 700 to 1,000 square feet per hour, you know, depending on the company. You know, that's great. But in the commercial world, that could be anywhere from 32 to 3,500 square feet per hour. So you can see that's a huge, huge difference. So if we're using a uh, residential production rate to price our accounts that we're bidding on, we're gonna bid too high, uh, just plain and simple. So when you do go out to price your accounts, uh, first of all, take off that residential hat and think in, in commercial terms as far as what your production rate is uh, for your cleaners to come through this facility, uh, this small office or, or medical center, whatever it is, and, uh, a, a, and, and use those production rates. At least that will give you a time to clean, and then from there you can do the, use a formula that will give you uh, your, your, uh, your price point. But then, you know, that's all fine and good that you got a price point, but you still have to make sure that you are going to make a profit on that price point. And that's where on the janitorial store and my house cleaning biz, we have bidding calculators just for that. Yeah, you know it's important that we that we always make a profit on every every job and every account that we that we take on. So always keep that in mind. Uh, so covered the production rates. Now the other thing is that they they got a lack of training. Now just because you have a residential cleaner that's cleaning homes and apartments and things like that there, uh, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to move them right into a commercial setting, and uh, they'll be able to clean. Uh, within the time allo allowed for that for that uh, that account So again, you have to start over you have to retrain people um, One of the other common mistakes that I have is that they uh, often put the wrong cleaner in the commercial account uh, Residential cleaners will generally just use their residential cleaning uh, 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 team and uh, they'll send them over to do a commercial location well, you have to remember their mindset is uh, a slower pace. Uh, and it's generally because if they're doing a general clean in a home, they're doing a little bit more detailed work. That's why the production rates are so low. You cannot use that same rate when you go into a commercial cleaning business or a commercial cleaning account. Um, like I say, it'll just take you way too long. Uh, you'll lose money and or you'll overprice the account. So. Try not to uh, send a residential cleaner into, into a commercial account unless they've been properly trained on cleaning a commercial account. And then again, they have to remember that they're in a, that they're in a commercial account. They have to be wearing a commercial hat. They got to take off the residential hat and not be thinking about cleaning a residential home as you're working through an office space or a medical center. Uh, it just won't work. So keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you have the, the, the right cleaner uh, for the right job. Now the other thing is too is uh, I've been saying this all along is just rem remove the residential hat, uh, and that's probably the biggest uh, hassle or the hurdle I should say uh, people have is that they often forget to take off the residential hat when they're when they're walking through a commercial building or talking to somebody in a commercial space uh, about providing them a proposal to clean. Um, so uh, you have to you, ha you have to do that. Uh, because, like I said earlier, you know, the, we're talking two totally different businesses. Um, you know, the things that we talk about on the commercial side are totally different than what we talk about on the residential side. So uh, when you're in front of a prospect, make sure you have that right hat on and, uh, and you're talking, the, talking the, the language that you should be talking. So that's a, another tip. The other thing that, w that I often see, too, is that uh, they have a misunderstanding of cleaning systems. So, um, 
you know, uh, I, I will generally ask them, you know, what kind of system are they using to clean that, uh, the commercial facility, and uh, they'll just, uh, they'll either just say, well, I send in a team of two people, uh, you know, which, fine, that's fine, but now are they, do they have that residential hat on, saying that I, I send in a team of two people, or are they actually doing actual team cleaning, um, where they, these two people have actually been trained as specialists in multiple areas, to where they can actually work through that facility as a team cleaning uh, system and uh, really amp up their production rates. Uh, often that's not the case. The, uh, I've talked to many uh, residential cleaning companies and when I ask them to give me a definition of their team cleaning, uh, it's just not on base. So uh, make sure you understand exactly what, what the, the cleaning systems are. And in fact, I'll jump down here a little bit and I'll talk a little bit about that because you know your cleaning systems we're talking about uh, zone cleaning, we're talking about team cleaning, we're talking about skip cleaning, we're talking about collaborative cleaning. There's many different systems of cleaning that you can use as you're moving through a, uh, a commercial facility. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Those are the adjustments you have to make. Um, but anyway, that, that's, one of the, the, that's one of the things, uh, of the common mistakes that they make. Um, now let me switch a little bit and let me talk about when you do get started to, and you're ready to go into a commercial, uh, the, uh, commercial industry. So the first thing you want to do is just go, go for small accounts. Um, you got to get your feet wet, dip your toe in the water, you got to see how things, how things work and so on and so forth. So do it with smaller buildings. You, do, you definitely don't want to go in and uh, start pricing you know, 15,000, 30, 40, 50,000 square foot facilities. Not a good idea. Uh, you don't want those to be your first account uh, because you will struggle and chances are most likely that you've, you've underbid it anyway. So keep your to small accounts. Uh, typically, uh, general, you know, professional office buildings are usually the best ones to start with. Um, you know, some people will go ahead and they'll do hair salons and uh, you know, other retail space. Uh, but you have to remember too though, you, you have to know the sectors uh, that you're going to service, and what I mean by sectors is that you got you got uh, professional office, you got educational, you got medical, you got industrial, and you got retail. And I'll tell you, retail is not where you want to go, so you want to avoid that because the prices have just plummeted. Uh, you want to stay away from retail. Uh, we have a, a very large uh, uh, a member of the Janitorial store that's a very large company, and uh, in fact, they're they're actually moving out of that sector because of that reason. So, um, so start off small and you'll be fine. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, build your cleaning systems. Again, we talked about the zone, uh, the team cleaning and the skip cleaning, collaborative cleaning. Build those systems because you, you have to have those in place in order to know when you do a walkthrough of a commercial space, what type of system you're going to use to clean that facility. Now you may use a combination of both. It's very common for people to use both zone cleaning and team cleaning in a facility. So keep that in mind. But you have to be able to identify which system you're going to use. And uh, we do have, uh, we have videos on the janitorial store that uh, show you these different cleaning systems and uh, how you'd set them up with, with, uh, with uh, uh, team, team members. So, uh, and then again, you know, don't have a residential cleaner do commercial cleaning. Make sure that that residential cleaner has been trained to do commercial cleaning uh, because otherwise your production rates uh, will be low. They're not going to hit the mark. And what I mean by the mark, the mark is the, the time that you've given and budgeted for to get that account cleaned. So always keep that in mind. Then uh, whenever possible, try to sell day cleaning. So when you're out there selling selling your surfaces uh, for a commercial cleaning, you know for these accounts, try to sell day cleaning. Uh, a lot of companies uh, provide that service, and, and it's a great way for you to, uh, you know, incorporate that into your residential cleaning uh, business. Because again, you're cleaning uh, during the day, daytime hours. So why not try to keep the commercial side there too? But now, as you continue to grow your commercial side, you may decide to get into bigger accounts. And then now you may end up with accounts that you'll have to clean after business hours, you know, after, after 5, 30, 6 o'clock, which is fine, you know, uh, because if you're going to expand and grow that side of the business, uh, eventually that's what will happen. Uh, you, all your clients, you won't be that fortunate that all your clients are daytime cleans. So 
keep that in mind and uh, uh, train your team uh, again you know the train uh, training is, if you if anybody knows us they know that we're big on training um, it's an essential piece of your business um, doesn't matter what size you are but as, as soon as you start to hire employees that's one of the first things you should be doing is training your employees and some of the training programs or the training systems that you should be having them go through is general cleaning safety cleaning those are the two primary ones that you should be providing general cleaning so everybody understands your system of, of cleaning so they can hit your production marks uh, safety cleaning very important uh, the more that you avoid accidents, the lower your workman's comp and a lot of other associated uh, pricing. So very, very important. Not to mention that uh, you know it's something that's mandatory by OSHA at least once a year that you provide safety training to your employees. So, uh, and when you do provide the, the training, doesn't matter what what it is, make sure that uh, make sure that it's documented. Uh, so when a person comes in and if you're doing team uh, you know a classroom setting or even a single individual always have them sign off on a on a, on a sign-in sheet that they're attending the the, the, the training uh, and then also give them a certificate of completion you can give them one then you can also put a copy in their employee file so now you got proof that you know they actually been provided the training that that's required okay customer service training it's incredible that how many companies I talk to that don't offer customer service training. That just blows my mind, you know, because our cleaners, our team, they're the, the front, front end of our company. They're the ones that may come in, and will come in contact with our clients. We want to make sure that our, that our team can handle any situation that may arise when they're engaged with our client. Very important. So, we feel that that's a must. These top three, we feel is a must. You should, you should be providing that training. Now, also, the thing that I often see, uh, both on commercial and residential cleaning companies, is that they don't provide any chemical solution training. What I mean by that, they don't take the time to, to uh, have a training class and train their, their employees and team on what cleaning solutions are. So you know you have your detergents, you got your uh, alkaline cleaners, acids cleaners, disinfectants, sanitizers, uh, bacteria and enzymes, and then you got solvent cleaners. So you know if we were to have a discussion with with anybody uh, about that, generally they couldn't tell me what what cleaner is what and why I would use a certain cleaner for whatever purpose. Very important because again when we're when we're cleaning homes. We have all this, the different types of surfaces in the home. We can come across granite, marble, uh, you know, corian, uh, formica, um, you know, stone, uh, uh, vinyl, you know, just all these different surfaces. And if we're not training our, our cleaners on which chemical solution to use on what surfaces and or to train them on how to identify the surfaces and the soils that they're cleaning, how can they choose the correct cleaning solution to remove the uh, to remove the soil so in some cases and this has happened there's been companies that uh, the cleaner had used the wrong cleaning solution on the surface and and ruined the surface you know and it's, and it's really common I see this a lot on Facebook where people will ask you know what are you using to clean this and you'll, you'll go through the thread and you'll have 50 or 100 different cleaners you know that they're that people are saying well use this 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 you know well you know it's and it's all personal preference but I often see an awful lot of those products that shouldn't be used on that surface so you know hopefully they're not taking that advice because they'll be replacing <laughs> they'll be re replacing the, the surface but anyway very very important that that we we train our people on our cleaning solutions now some additional training that you may want to have if you continue to go into the commercial arena is especially when whenever we are in contact with body fluids so uh, dental office uh, and uh, um, you know any medical uh, centers or clinics that you may be doing you have to offer your people bloodborne pathogen training that's a must uh, you also have to uh, offer them the hepatitis B shots uh, and that's on your dime you pay for it uh, that is a series of three shots over a period of time, and uh, and the employer pays for that. So 
uh, keep that in mind but if you're going to get into that arena you you definitely got to have that training uh, carpet and upholstery cleaning is another great add-on service that a, a lot of residential uh, companies don't even offer it uh, which really surprises me because you know it's just a great add-on service that that you that you should because you're leaving a lot of money on the table but you know carpet cleaning itself um, you know on average you're making uh, 25 cents a square foot on residential and uh, about uh, 21 cents 18 to 21 cents on the commercial side so that's really a no-brainer. Uh, the same thing is true for your, your upholstery, your upholstery cleaning. I mean, in a home, you've got, you've got ottomans, you've got chairs, recliners, uh, uh, you know, just all kinds of different surfaces that you can clean. And the uh, same thing is true in a, in a commercial setting. You've got office chairs, uh, you've got office partitions, um, and just a lot of different other spaces in there. On the commercial side, you can also clean wallpaper. Um, it's, it's a it's a big money maker. So keep this stuff in mind uh, as you as you're building your business. Now the other thing you can do too is uh, uh, hard floor care. Now as you guys know, as residential cleaners, you go through a home and you're seeing all types of different floor surfaces. You know everything from uh, uh, travertine to vinyl to, to ceramic uh, to, to concrete. You know uh, wood. So you're seeing all these different these different surfaces. Well, it's very important that you understand, uh, or that you yeah that you understand how to clean these. But even more important, it's more uh, that you can identify what it is. But you know the the always the safe bet uh, whenever cleaning a floor surface is always go to a neutral pH floor cleaner, which is true. You can, but you have to remember that the neutral pH floor cleaner is going to leave a residue. So over time. You're going to you're going to build up residue. That's why on the resident residential side of, of the industry, that's why you'll have the homeowner take a, uh, a a paper towel, wet it, wipe the floor, and come up and it's all dirty. Well, that's why, because you're leaving actually leaving a residue behind. So you need to incorporate a deep clean somewhere in your in your floor program. Uh, so you know it's kind of an upsell for 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 some people or just added value for others. But anyway, it's very important. So your, yeah, your go-to chemical could be a neutral pH uh, floor cleaner, but then again, if you're doing soaps and or uh, if you're doing stones and some other things, then you can just use a stone soap. So again, it's important to know to know the surface you're cleaning and how to clean it and what chemical to use. The other thing that you want to really uh, think about is as you continue to to build and scale your business, who's training your managers, and uh, you know what kind of training are they getting. Uh, very important because these people are going to be our leaders of our company. So we have to make sure that that they're getting the right training. So uh, that's for us, you know, on the, the janitorial store, we have uh, Clean Smart University. We have uh, thousands of training videos for managers, supervisors, uh, and uh, just uh, general cleaners. And uh, they can go there and then get the training that they need uh, because that is another thing that I often see, both in residential and, and commercial, that Typically, a person that's put into a management position shouldn't be in that position. Uh, they haven't been trained properly. They don't have the skills. But that's why, again, all these things are learnable. So take the time and give these people the training they need. Uh, you know, sure, it's a cost, but you know, it, it's a lot less costly for you to train these people than to you lose business or even go out of business. So that was another one too is the supervisor training. Same thing. Often, you know, we always I always see companies uh, promote from within, which is fine, you know. But they'll have a, they'll have a frontline cleaner promote them to a, a lead person or a, a team lead supervisor, um, and a lot of times there's no additional training provided to that person when they move into that position. So you're putting a, a you're taking a person that's that's been at this level here and you're moving them over here. Uh, and not giving them any additional training to so they're successful uh, because now they're in a management position they're managing people so they have to know how to deal with people how to manage people and how to handle situations if you don't give them the right tools they're gonna fail so keep that in mind see that all the time and uh, then obviously we got uh, your your, cer your certifications certifications are important now that also can be you know your certifications can be used on your residential and your commercial side of your business uh, the certifications that we have are the CR, uh, CMI. Uh, we actually developed uh, multiple training programs and uh, had them certified by CMI. 
So in the janitorial store and my house cleaning business, people are able to, to go there and uh, get those certifications for their cleaners, um, which is very helpful, you know, because again, now we know that these, that our, our cleaners are actually, they, they actually know and retain what they've been trained. So it's very important. So uh, that's what you can do, uh, you know, to avoid these common mistakes uh, and to get started in the cl uh, commercial cleaning industry. You know, the commercial side, uh, I've done both. I've done residential, done, uh, done commercial. And uh, in fact, every time I started uh, my cleaning company, I've always done residential first, uh, like most people, because it's a, it's a revenue generator right away and so on and so forth. But, you know, and it works out well. But, uh, um, you know, uh, so I know that, that industry, uh, is, uh, but I know the commercial side of the industry much better. And, uh, and the reason, some people always ask me, well, if you had a choice, which one would you, which one would you select? And I always have to say commercial. And the reason being is because when you talk about the magic number of a million dollar business, uh, you think about uh, residential and how many clients you need to generate a million dollar, uh, million dollars in revenue. Well, that's uh, you know what, 364 um, biweekly clients at about 100, what, 15, 120 dollars per per service. Boy, you know that's that's a lot of personalities to deal with. Uh, on the commercial side, that could be anywhere from 70 accounts to maybe 120 accounts. Um, so you can see where do I want to deal with 300 and some odd different personalities that are, uh, you know, personalities, or do I want to deal with the others? So that's that's why I, I prefer the commercial side of things, but also I can make a heck of a lot more money. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty common for, you know, the residential side, the top 1%. Um, you know, they're, they're doing probably three to five million dollars. The top one percent of the commercial side of the business, uh, of the industry, is doing hundreds of millions. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 it's quite incredible the, the, the money or the revenue that you can actually generate from, a, from your uh, uh, cleaning business. But uh, that's my take on it. Uh, hopefully I, you guys have found this uh, uh, useful. And uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, be more than happy to share, uh, you know, my ideas and my knowledge with you. Um, you know, and for those of you that don't me, know me, uh, uh, I've been in the industry 32 years. I've uh, uh, built uh, multiple cleaning companies from scratch and sold them. I uh, did that in uh, multiple states. Um, and I've, hel uh, I've helped over, uh, well over 10,000 people, you know, start their cleaning companies. Um, and uh, there's... Uh, a lot of people that that I worked with over the years that are that have uh, built multi-million dollar uh, cleaning companies and uh, become millionaires, uh, which is great. You know, I like like seeing that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, you know that's what I do. I enjoy it. And uh, you know, there's a lot of resources on my house cleaning biz and uh, the janitorialstore.com. So if you are thinking about going into that commercial side of it, you know, reach out to us. Be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, you know, I often offer a, you know 30 minute uh, free uh, coaching call. So I can help you at least get you pointed in the right direction uh, as to where you are now. So um, thanks again, and uh, I appreciate it.